Today I want to show how to do mail merge in Word, in which I use a table here from Excel in order to populate a Word template. In this case, I'll go through each row one at a time and grabbing the relevant field. So when I'm writing to Uruka, I'll have these values available. And then I want to do something more complicated in the template where I only want a sentence to show if the value in PC is yes and if the value in phone is yes, where the value of phone is no, I don't want to show the line. In this case, this would be IT registration. When Pecora quits her job, she doesn't have to hand in her phone because she doesn't have one. To activate mail merge, I need to go into mailings and then select recipients. I can say use an existing list and then you need to navigate into the relevant folder. Here you get a pop up saying all of the tables I have available. I can see that my sheet is called sheet one when was it modified and it's a type table. And then I know that the first column is the headers because it's a table. So I'll leave that selected. I now have access to my variables, so to speak, and I can enter them by going into insert merge field. And then I can see the four columns I have access to. So I can say insert name. And then because I'm in Alt F9 mode, I can see the code. But if I break out of that, I'll just get these uh, strange symbols and name because that's the name of the column. And notice how the whole thing is highlighted here. Going back into code mode, I can see what the code actually is. It's called merge field and then the name of the column. If I break out of code view, I can go up and preview results to see that this is what the mail will look like for the first person. Right now it just says Uruka and then I can go to the next person, say Pecora. So that's fine. What I want to do is then have a sentence that says if they have a PC, they need to remember to hand it in, which I can do by going back into the code and say control F9, then I want an if. So if this merge field, that's not name, that's merge field PC. So I can just copy this. So if merge field PC, and notice how I had a question mark in the table, but I don't have that here. And actually I should delete that to show how to do it. It's just insert merge field and then say PC. So if that value is equal to yes, then I want to print. And if the value of PC isn't yes, then I want to print nothing. And then breaking out of code view, I can see that both people have a PC, so they need to remember to hand it in. And I can then do the same thing for the phone. But instead of saying PC, I'll say phone. And here we'll see a line for Uruka because she has a phone and nothing for Pecora. I might want to have something a bit more complicated, like having a checkbox that they physically need to sign. This would be relevant if you print it out and then have the person actually physically sign it. So you'd have down here like signature line and a date line. And you would probably want to spend more time making it than I am right now. If I go back into the code view with Alt F9, I can say that instead of this text, I want to say confirm that you've handed in your PC. And I want the same for the phone. And in order to get the checkbox, I can go into the developer tab and add a basic checkbox. And I can do the same here. And you could do something more complicated by going into properties. Actually, that's not right. I need to go into design mode. And then I can click on this box and select that if it wants to cooperate. And then I can say properties and I could do something like what should it look like and what should it not look like. And I could give it tags and this would be for VBA. You could say when the, this specific checkbox has been checked or unchecked, it would run some code. But I want this to be physically printed to the person. So this is actually fine. I can go back and break out a code view to see what it looks like. And then say confirm you handed in a PC and confirm you handed in both. So what I want to try out is that you could have a line break that is pressing shift enter after this code, but within the quotation marks. And then I just want to see what it looks like. So now you have line breaks and no line. And yeah, now you have line breaks and that's actually worse because I want this to be at the bottom of the page always. So that was a terrible idea, but I wanted to show that you can do it. So that moves a little bit. So you'd probably maybe want to insert a text box to say signature line at the bottom here with a line because then it won't physically be moved. But when you didn't want to print it, maybe you only want to show one person at a time. You could go in and click find recipient and say maybe name. I want to find Uruka, which I already have here. You could also go under edit recipient list and find them and say I only want this Uruka. I only have one person. I personally don't really like doing it like this. You could also add a filter if you want to. I would rather make the table in Excel and then put the filter there because then I can use Power Query to go into SharePoint and say I have one person that I'm looking for. Put that in a cell, a name cell. Then you can use that as a filter in Power Query. And then you can grab the whole table of employees from SharePoint 
because when you do mail merge in Word, you can't use a SharePoint file as your source. At least I haven't been able to find it. So I would want to have a table with only one row. And then you can say finish and merge. And then just say print documents one. Or you would say from one to one if you have many. So you could also say four to four. And it depends on how you want to do things. I would rather have a table with one row because then you know that's the one you're going to print. So again, this is what it looks like when you have a preview results off. So I guess it just always shows the yes condition or rather the true condition for the if statement. So, yep, 